Hello, everybody. My name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adaptive Perspectives. I believe it's my purpose, my calling to help you identify your dreams and help you reach your financial freedom destination and maintain it so you can pass that wealth on to the next generation. If, you under, if you've seen any of my videos, you understand our investment strategy using closed-end funds. And understanding that strategy is key because I'm going to apply that strategy towards sifting and filtering out all these financial memes. Uh, the vast majority of the memes, uh, I'll be honest, they're, they're just kind of trashy. Uh, but I have found some that are decent here and there. But tonight's or today's, whenever this video posts, uh, not the best meme. So uh, reminders, this is an unedited video. Uh, who knows what you'll hear as I film these in my house. And uh, I, I'm going to show our strategy of using closed-end funds, or at, le at least a snippet of it. I'm not going to show the entire closed-end fund master, but I will show you two, uh, two funds off that list and two funds we own. Uh, the disclaimers. If you want the full disclaimers, by all means, please read the description. Otherwise, the what I'll mention here is that I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, I, I'm a fan. I'm a financial strategist. I I listen to your concerns. We look at your situation and we strategize the best. I don't want to strategize the best strategy. I, I don't like the repetition of words. We strategize the best um, strategy. Uh, double words and unedited video. So we we formulate the best strategy to fit your needs. Uh, overall, this is not a closed-end fund review. I mean, I'm gonna talk about two closed-end funds and compare those to a lot of uh, single individual stocks you see recommended in a lot of different places. Uh, my goal is not to trash people when I make these videos. Uh, in, instead, I, I like to filter out financial advice that you see on the internet at large. And I get this video is uh, lumped into that same umbrella too, but my, my goal is to filter out all these financial memes that we see on Pinterest, and Instagram, and Facebook, and, and everywhere else. Uh, yeah, and, and same thing. I, I, my goal is not to slander anybody, but it, you and I both want good advice and we want to separate the good from the bad. So I'm going to apply our lens of things and show you why I think this is bad advice. So without further ado, let me share my screen. So I was going back through this board. This is my Pinterest, my Pinterest account overall. Um, and as I go through this board, which it gets added to every week, um, sometimes multiple times a day, just based on what I find. I try not to repeat the memes. Uh, I, I take out the duplicates, uh, but I see memes like this and look, it, it's got a cool photo and I'm not saying anything against this group, but from my standpoint, this is bad advice. And you can read the, I mean, you can pause the video and you can read this. I'll even expand it. Uh, so you can pause it and read that. Excuse me, uh, my notes to myself uh, and, and how I prep these videos. But I, I try to find the now individual stocks. I mean, closed in funds are made up of individual stocks. And you can find them based on areas of interest, like there's bonds and there's junk bonds and there's energy transfer and there's utilities and there's consumer and then there's uh, like portfolios in a camp, uh, technology portfolios in a camp. Uh, Texas Instruments does not seem like a huge AI company, but it is. Uh, IBM is known for their computers, but it's also a huge microchip and just overall AI company. Uh, all of this has technology integrated into it to a degree, uh, whether it's Microsoft or Enterprise or Exxon or Coke or um, let's see. See outright, yeah, outright Microsoft. But um, in, in looking at this data, like how much the, the title of it, how much does it cost to earn a thousand in dividends? This is misleading because it goes to strategy. If your strategy is individual funds and heightened risk with every fund, then yeah, this this strategy relates to the title, 
but notice how much you have to you have to have invested in every one of these in order to get a thousand in dividends with every one of these. And that said, this is old data. I ran the numbers today. This is old data. So I tried to find as many of these companies as I could find inside the funds that we own. And many of the funds have different technology, different AI companies, different pharmaceutical companies, different oil and gas companies, but these two had the most of this list. Uh, so I took the company data from those from those two groups and I put them in the spreadsheet. Now, is it as pretty as this one here? No, but it's actual factual data. So if we look at what the mean says and we look at these companies, which are a little bit different, like there's one, uh, they, sh they share Microsoft, Ooh, let me see. They share Microsoft, Texas Instruments, Coca-Cola, and Avi. And there's a little differentiation between portfolios. So as of today, this is August 23rd, 2023. As of today, these were the opening values of these companies. So if we take the amount listed in the meme, I'll do one, I'm not gonna do them all, but at Microsoft, 101, 589, divided by the current cost per share, uh, that's not, yeah, live video. So 101, 589 divided by, 323.89. There we go. So 313 whole shares, right? So this number is based on today. This dividend is based on today. And this percentage is based on today. So if you look at the overall yield today compared to what's in the meme, it's different. You don't know when this was taken. You don't, there's no information regarding what date these values were taken on. So as of today, these are the numbers. So if you use the investment advice from the mean and break it down, these are the annual dividends you get from the same financial investment on that mean. Together, you get almost six grand in dividends but you are spending almost $275,000 to get just six grand in dividends a year. And they all pay quarterly. So they don't even pay monthly, right? You're getting under 3%. And with inflation at four, regardless of what the Federal Reserve says, with inflation at four at minimum, which I think it's more, you're losing money investing into these companies. The only one that puts you just past break even is Avi. And on this end of things, slightly different makeup, right? Star, uh, CVS instead of Starbucks, IBM instead of Exxon. Let's see. Yeah, same thing for Avi. IBM pays you a little bit more. You get a slightly higher annual dividend, but same thing, it's all quarterly funds. You're paying slightly less to get slightly more, which means you have a slightly better annual yield. But it's nothing spectacular. I mean, you're spending almost $250,000 or $275,000 to get a 3% yield. That's crazy to me because I can beat that system with a closed-end fund. We own this. We own this fund. We own this fund, too. We own this fund. It's a portfolio and a can. And if you want to see just how the uh, fund is structured, type in ZTR Portfolio Morningstar, and you'll get the top 25 with this cool, cool little pie chart, and it'll show you exactly how the, the portfolio overall is structured. It'll tell you the total number of holdings, and it'll give you the top 25 companies or top 25 percentages in the portfolio. 
So if we take this $275,000 and use this today, so closed in funds sell, they either sell for more than they're worth premium, or they sell for break even, or they sell for a discount. And we track and we evaluate how good of a deal it is based on the discount. So currently, ZTR has an, almost an 8.6% discount. And it makes it, it makes it an important distinction between the rest of the field. It pays an eight cent dividend a share, which does not seem like a lot, but for the buy-in price and the dividend and that it pays monthly, currently you're getting almost a 17% annual yield paid monthly. So if we take this data and combine it with what you would spend on these six funds, you take that 274000 ish divide it by $5.65, you get this number over here. But we're buying whole shares only. So you get this number. So you take that amount overall, right? So the cost of these shares is a little bit less than over here because we're buying whole shares. But that's the overall dividend paid now it's 46,000 a year. So we can divide that by month for you. So 46, 689.6 divided by 12 gives you $3,890, almost, almost $3,891 per month. Per month on these six and a lot more inside this portfolio compared to this fund, which we also own, it pays quarterly. So if we take the same amount invested, we bring it over here, we get that number total. You can see the math up at the top. So we get that many total shares multiplied by four in the dividend and you get 35,000 a year paid quarterly for an almost 14% annual yield. And my ongoing question, which is a rhetorical question, I ask, there's nobody on the video to respond. There's nobody who can respond, right? But if this is what you're spending here, if you could get it for cheaper, get it at a discount, get it at a discount greater than what it's been, like that's historically significant of how steep the discount is compared to now compared to what it has been, so if you can get a cheaper buy-in at a discount for a significantly different discount than it's been historically, get an obscene dividend and get bank on the dividends. So as these companies rise and fall, your principal stays intact. You're not selling it, trying to make ends meet. Your principal stays intact and you collect this crazy dividend off the same amount of money invested. Why wouldn't you? buy a closed-end fund where you can get access to these companies, get a cool monthly payment, cool monthly dividend at a really cheap buy-in, get a lot of other stuff inside this portfolio when it can. And, and if you're worried about risk, diminish your risk, right? Because you could buy Exxon as it is. And as the, price, as the, the overall pr share price rises and falls, maybe their dividend gets impacted. CTR, I can't remember how many funds they currently own, but it, you know, 100 plus funds, maybe it's 500. Uh, if one suffers, heck, if 100 suffer, yeah, your share price is going to fluctuate a little bit, right? But the dividend stays. And if we all experience global, global everything again, yeah, will the dividend change? Yes. But it'll come back. ZTR runs their fund well. Um, and, and for what you get on the pot, I mean, the positive side of things, yeah, cheaper buy-in, discount, historically significant discount right now. But yeah, if you're going to spend this, and I'm not saying it's a bad idea, I'm not even, I'm, I'm not downplaying what you're spending, but if you're going to spend this amount of bank on individual funds, why not spend it here and for access to a lot of other funds, including these? and get a much better dividend. Like you could, this 
will suffice for some people's retirement. Right? And if you want more than that, by all means, right? Invest in other things. There are, there are 436 current closed-in funds, all said and done. Like some pay a lot, some pay none. The average across all funds right now is eight and a half. You can find funds that have a for sure 10% yield and can maintain that and grow it. So if you could tuck, I mean, think of it. So if you could spend this amount of money on these things or add up all of this stuff for individual fund access and invest it into a fund that would give you access to the majority of these funds, why wouldn't you? And, and I ask that not out of condescension, condescension, uh, condescension, condensation, uh, I ask you not out of condescension, like I'm not looking down upon you, I'm not speaking down to you. I'm asking out of curiosity, why wouldn't you buy a fund that gives you greater access, smaller buy-in, better dividend, better overall projection, and a crazy dividend? Like, why not? So if you have an answer, by all means, put it in the comments, because I would seriously love to know. Uh, our current and like this says so our current portfolio with data updated as of today our current our current portfolio generates a safe 10-6 all invested through closed end funds or I guess or this amount of money gains us this and we we own only closed end funds uh, uh, yeah so I'll leave it there, short and sweet and to the point. So my goal is to, I'll go back a page and hope that it sends me to the bottom of the page and it doesn't pause on me. Let's see, nope, no, it's not. My notes. So my goal is to continue to evaluate these memes and use our strategy to evaluate them. Because these memes, I mean, I'll be honest, the memes are pretty, right? I mean, all of these memes look amazing. People put a lot of time and effort into making them. The problem is, my problem is, it's not always great advice. Like six stocks to buy and hold forever. Well, it, it's kind of dependent on your investment strategy. And I can find these in a closed-end fund. Um, I can find these in a closed-end fund. I can find these three, I think, in, in two or three closed-end funds that will pay me a lot more for what these would pay me. So when you look at all of these different memes, which I'll get to this one eventually. I'll get it's not straight financial, but I don't like this meme, but I'll get to it eventually. Um, when you look at all this stuff, you have to know your strategy and you have to be able to sort and sift everything people are telling you. Like, hey, this sounds and looks pretty. Does it actually work? No, no, it doesn't. And this proves it. If you want to if you want to drop two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars on six companies, hoping you can get a thousand dollars from each company, which you'll see that that's not the case. You only get that large of an annual yield, but if you took the same amount of money and put it in a, in a closed-end fund that had access to all of these plus a lot more, you could make bank while your principal stays intact and you live off the dividends. That's, that's amazing to me that I can self-manage my portfolio and orchestrate this. Now, are we anywhere near that number? No. But 10% on 20 grand invested, that's pretty amazing because it could be 3% on 20 grand invested, or I could be paying somebody else to manage our portfolio. So losing those fees and only getting 3% or less, which would really just be us losing more money because inflation will eat that number alive. At 4% inflation, plus the fees you're paying to your managerial staff, Hey, your portfolio made 4%. Well, great. Inflation's 4%. So you're actually losing money when you pay your managerial staff. 
which I'm not saying those those guys and gals don't deserve the money they get for managing their portfolio because they, for the most part, they do a great job. But if you're breaking even on your yield, if inflation is eating this, right, or actually you're negative on the yield because inflation is eating this, then you're losing even more through what you're paying somebody else to manage your portfolio. So the choice is yours. Invest how you want to invest, but know your strategy and know what you're actually trying to achieve. So, and I'll leave it there. So let's stop that share. Uh, if you like this content, and if you want more of this, this content, please consider subscribing to my channel. And then if you want to learn more about earned income and, and passive income, head over to my Facebook channel called Navigate Your Finances. Uh, the link will be in the, in the description of the video. So regardless of what your strategy is, regardless of what your goals are, regardless of where you're headed, just remember you're the one steering the boat, right? You're the captain of your ship. You have the power to change your life, your financial future. Many people, look at all these different memes. Many people will offer to help you. You have to get really good at figuring out what's good advice and what's bad advice. So you end up making a choice. So make sure you make the best choice for you. This is Daniel Young signing off. I will see you all on a different video. Bye-bye.